Hi everyone, thank you for joining our uh, Google Plus and Education Hangout today. I'm Stephen Butchie on our Google and Education team and I'm joined by a great panel of social studies and foreign language teachers from across the US and Canada, Patricia. Um, so we're really excited today to have them all here and what a great week because it's Teacher Appreciation Week and these are some stellar teachers. So thank you to all of you for being part of this. Um, just as a, a rule of housekeeping, if you're watching this Hangout, the best practice is to actually copy the URL at the top of your page. So you can click Control C. Keep that page there and open up a new ta tab and paste that same URL. That way you can be watching this Hangout on one tab. And if you have questions on the second tab, you can actually place them in the comments section below the video. We'll actually be taking comments at the end, uh, the second half of this Hangout. So if you have any questions on how teachers are doing something, Feel free to add that in there, and we'll be able to uh, take those for you. So um, with that, we have a great panel lined up today. Um, I'm joined with a lot of great teachers representing a lot of different areas. So uh, on the far left is Annalisa Dahlgren from uh, Marshall and teaching uh, seventh and eighth grades. So Annalisa is there. To the right of her is Dan Sitter from Fond du Lac, also in Wisconsin, teaching 10th through 12th grade. Then we've got Heather, uh, Heather Kilgallen from uh, Illinois teaching 11th and 12th grade. Then we've got a tool, uh, two teachers, again, Double the Fun, Ann Carmel and Jennifer Teller um, from New Jersey teaching 5th grade in a two-person team. We've got Pat Patricia Toth from, uh, from Canada up in Alberta teaching uh, foreign language. So that'll be really interesting to hear how you're using Chromebooks in foreign language in the web. And then not but uh, last but not least, on the far right, Sarah Littrell from Illinois teaching social studies in 11th grade. So a great panel of teachers today. Really looking forward to hearing from all of you and what you're doing that's above and beyond. So with that, I'm actually going to pass it over to Annalisa um, and would love to hear how are you using Chromebooks uh, up in Marshall? Hey there. Um, well, the biggest thing for us is that our whole our whole school, we're a 7 a building, and we're one-to-one -one completely, totally with Chromebooks all day, every day. And the biggest change that we've seen as teachers at the middle school is just students are so much more engaged in their learning. Um, they will quickly chat us or email us with questions, which is a level of involvement that we didn't see in previous years. Um, students are much better advocates for their own grades um, because they are always they always have the grade tab up checking to make sure that we update their assignments um, and update their grades frequently. I wanted to share with you a couple of the tools and products that we use. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you. Looks good. And we can pop see this up. So we have a Google Calendar for each class. Um, and students can access, you know, here's in yellow is what the seventh graders are working on, red is what the eighth graders have for homework, and then they sync in all their classes. Um, I think that helps a lot of our students stay organized. We also use Google Docs a lot for collaboration. So what I did is I put up a, a project-based team learning activity that we've done. Um, and then as the students are working, I talk with them about what they're doing, what they're doing well, where they could add more details, um, and how they can continue learning about our topics. For our school management in Marshall, we're using Schoology, which is like our Blackboard or D2L program that we use. And in Schoology, you can turn in assignments. I can give students feedback. I can score the work that they've done. I can do projects. I can do tests. And we can have discussions where students reply to each other about what we're doing. Um, I've had a lot of success using Prezi. All of the products that I'm showing are, are things that work totally fine on the Chromebook. So a Prezi would be an online way of kind of a snazzier PowerPoint that maybe is less linear for students who, who want to put it together in their own in their own way. We've used Poplets too, which are like online mind mapping tools where students can embed text or picture to articulate how or why something happened. We've also done a lot of projects using Wix, which is an online website creator that's very intuitive and the students have a lot of success with the creativity and really owning the website that they're creating. Uh, also for social studies, we've used ThingLink, which is uh, a website that lets you take an image and then attach tags to the image to explain, you know, here's where this is, this part of the picture helps give more details about the topic that I'm researching. 
Another tool that we use in my room is Go Animate. It's similar to Extra Normal, and they can create online animations um, where the characters talk and and explain, you know, whatever it is, whatever the text is that you type in. Um, a website that we also use. Oh, hang on, that one's gonna load there. Um, is s'more.com, which is an online flyer making site where students can create an argument, explain their, you know, their perspective on something, um, but do their own original writing and then format it in a way that makes the most sense to them. Similar, we have Blogster, which we've used too. Students can embed video, they can embed text um, as their way of creating an argument about whatever social studies or historical event we're discussing. I've also had success using Storybird, which is an online uh, bookmaking. So students can write a book using artwork done by another um, to, to create an argument. And then we've also used Animoto as a way to tie text and pictures together um, as we're learning about all of these different topics in history. Um, we're working at, at our school to experiment with the flipped classroom, so students watching short videos, thinking about what they're seeing, um, working collaboratively with their peers, and then being able to go back to the video, rewatch it, pause it, um, and learn at their own pace. Uh, but that's kind of a sampling of things that you see in my classroom. We're really focusing on doing projects instead of, you know, only doing tests, and then post posing the essential question and the learning targets and saying, how are you going to use the tools in front of you especially these tools that, that your Chromebook gives you access to all day, every day, to show me what you know and understand and what you're able to do. Those are great. I feel like I just learned a whole bunch. I didn't even know about all of those web tools. And I went through them quick, but uh, those they're are really you know, cool. fine, and they're, they're engaging. The students love, you know, here's the project. Which strategy or which tool are you going to use to show me that you can answer this essential question? And use a ton of details and build your argument. And I love the idea of moving away from, you know, just build a PowerPoint. It's you pick the right tool to show your expertise. And that's, that's pretty cool that you're given those options. Yeah. I was curious, you showed Wix. Do you allow, do students then publish their um, site to the web? Can other people go on and visit them, or are they locked down? Um, there's privacy settings within Wix. So gotcha. the students can make it as public or non-public as they want. And we do a lot of teaching, you know, to make sure that the students know appropriate web safety. And we don't have them using their whole names or, you know, it's their first name and their last initial or the first four letters and last four letters of their name. That's um, pretty cool, though. To make that sure that they're being responsible. Yeah. And that's pretty cool that they can actually say, hey, tell their parents, their friends, go on the web. You can actually find my creation. It's not just my I'm it to my teacher. Yeah. And Wix that's is great. very, very intuitive. The students loved figuring it out and then being the resources and the, the experts in the room, which, which is really true with all of this, the tools that we use. Um, yeah. They love to learn about it and then become the teacher. That's great. Have you seen that there's a lot of, has engagement levels changed or what have you seen in that regards? I think so. I think every day students are more interested because they have more ownership of their learning. And mm. if, if they're making the decisions and they're deciding how they're going to show me what they know, I think we'll, they'll be more engaged and we'll be more successful every day in class. That's great. Great examples. Thank you so much for sharing and stand by because I know there's going to be probably a lot of questions for you. So Sounds good. Great. Thank you. And um, passing it to, over to Dan, same state, different teacher. Um, <laughs> Dan over at Fond du Lac, and I know you guys have a lot of Chromebooks. I think like 24 or 2500 in a one-to-one. -one. So you guys have really dove in. Um, would love to hear what you guys are doing and, and how, how it's changed your culture and environment. Sure. Um, yeah, in Fond du Lac here, we uh, rolled out 2,400 Chromebooks at the beginning of the school year. Uh, we've got, you know, it's been a really, really fun learning atmosphere, and it's been really fantastic seeing kind of the transformation start to take place. One thing, like, when you asked Annalisa that I wanted to just jump on was the fact that, the, you know, are the kids more engaged? And one thing that I wanted to uh, let everybody know about that's watching this is that we actually have partnered up with the UW Fond du Lac here in town, and they've been doing this massive engagement study for us for the entire year. And so they're going to be writing all that up. So it's going to be really cool. We're going to have some like hard data to look at to see if uh, what, what our actual engagement levels are. And uh, it sounds like it's going really well. So that's pretty exciting. Um, on me, for me personally, what Chromebooks allowed me to do, I was already kind of a blended learning guy. And I used Haiku uh, Learning Management System for a long time. 
And once we got the Chromebooks, I could finally take my name off of being that guy that books out the uh, library uh, computer labs for the entire year, and then everybody points at and says, that's the guy. Uh, <laughs> so um, now that I have a constant access to every kid having their Chromebook, uh, it's been fantastic. And I, you know, I agree exactly with Annalisa that the, um, having letting the kids decide how they're going to present, I have found that, especially in social studies, because in my history class, uh, when they are building their topics of knowledge, I do kind of a thematic learning approach for the entire year uh, so that the kids have to decide what they're going to learn in history rather than kind of doing this chronological march um, that typically happens. The Chromebooks have let me individualize education to a point that I never would have been able to before. And, and um, you know, I believe my kind of my model this year has been an IEP for every kid, and it doesn't mean it's just a kid that has some kind of whatever an issue. It's every kid should have their own individualized plan. And um, it's been really neat because using the Chromebooks and then being able to manage workflow uh, with them has allowed me to get closer to that ideal. I mean, it's not perfect yet. And so some of the things I wanted to show, like I've got a lot of these cool things that the kids have built and whatnot, but I wanted to show a little bit about the teacher side of how my workflow has been changed dramatically. I mean, I have one little stack of papers about that high that has been turned in for the entire school year. And um, actually I had a student who made a poster, uh, an actual like paper poster, and um, brought it in. And I took a picture of it with my phone and I said, okay, let's show you how to add this. Because <laughs> I, I was like, oh my God, hey, what is this thing, this, this P thing, po -os? I, you know, it was, it, was, uh, <laughs> it was shocking that somebody brought something in that was hard copy. Uh, anyway, so I've been running, um, I, I can't, probably from the beginning of the year, I've been using the scripts Doctopus. And then uh, when the script Gubrick came along and got added to that, the guy that wrote those scripts by the name, I believe it's Andy Stillman, um, I've actually sent him unsolicited messages telling him how much I love him because it's made my life as an educator so much better and uh, easier. So I hope he doesn't think I'm cyber stalking him or anything because I kind of am, but let's not wait. Oh, this is public. Anyway, uh, I'll screen share you guys in so I can show you what I'm talking about and why my flow has uh, worked so well lately. We're good. We can see you. And you're making us all die of laughter. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, can you see my screen share going on? Yep, looks good. Okay, so I'm in here. You were, you so were, you just came back now. I think you need to reshare it, sorry. Oh, just okay. Face. Yeah, my, I got the pinwheel going on, so that wasn't very good. Oh, no. <laughs> there all we right. go. Now this we're golden. All right, so, and you can see in here, um, let me go back to the regular spreadsheet view. So like, this is for my AP psychology course. I teach three sections of AP Psych, and I've been trying to push, uh, if you know about AP, it feels sometimes like it can become a vocabulary marathon. Um, I've been trying to push for some more real authentic learning uh, to happen in terms of just being able to build something. And so I started doing a thing with objectives, but I couldn't figure out a good way to make my workflow happen. So I used the good old, and you can see up here, Doctopus, in order to make a digital photocopy, basically, of all of these kids work and gave them these objectives and so then like this one from uh, Christina uh, what they do is they build like they each have the the objective here and then they build in just basic notes and whatnot but then here's the cool part is where they can start bringing in the uh, <clears throat> visual aids and LinkedIn videos and then they can say look I watched this video and it helped me understand more and so as they build this then I can always come in here and I can look at it with them I can check for understanding, check for application, um, and it's not just enough just to put in pictures. It's you know they actually have to tell you why do the pictures uh, help you understand or apply your information better. And then what's great is so I go through this and as I'm reading it and I sit down with the student and talk about it. Then if you go up here and you see this little eyeball guy, that's Gubrick, and uh, I think this is Docty the Doctopus. He comes in here and he looks around a little bit. And you have to set this all up through the script, but then in here, you can drop in. So here's the rubric that I grade them on, and it pops it right in here. She obviously got all four. She did a really great job. You can drop in your comments here, and then if you just leave this check mark, you submit and paste to the doc. So I what think happens? I just shared that one specific browser, so we're not seeing the actual Doctopus piece. Oh, you're not? No, I, you might want to click share screen, share desktop. 
as opposed okay. to the specific browser that might that might solve for it. Is it a pop up that goes up on top of it or something like that? Oh yeah, okay. So you're yeah, then you probably won't be able to see it. Yeah. Um, because it's still yeah, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna show up. It's not gonna matter if I go to desktop. So okay, well when you click on this little guy, you guys couldn't see it, but it's it, it actually the rubric shows up right here. And then once you click on send and share, if you go all the way to the bottom of the document, you can see how much time and effort she put into this. Holy moly. Come on. My computer's being slow. Trust me, we'll get there. Down at the bottom, it actually pastes in the rubric and then also your uh, comments and such. There we go. And so once you've got that uh, in their document, they get an email saying that it's been graded. And then back into the spreadsheet world, if you click on here, it adds a new sheet to it, and it drops it in the scores for you into the, your spreadsheet, uh, which is then you also can find, obviously, the links to all the kids' work. And so it makes grading and communicating so easy. Uh, I've used it for my history classes across the board. I use it for these guys all the time. And then um, I know I'm using up a lot of time, so I'll quickly go through just a couple things. I use this with my history kids. This is just a cool timeline generator. Uh, it's at this embed.verite.co, and you build all of this in a Google uh, spreadsheet, and then you generate it with this website, and it's really neat because the kids really liked it, and it worked out really well. Um, all right, and I think that's it because I've already burned up a lot of time. Is there anything else? That was great, and I love the perspective, uh, you know, how it can make you more effective and efficient. There was actually a question on here, and I thought you would be a really good person to ask, given that you uh, had a role last year doing tech integration, um, was when you were, um, with all your students using technology, how did your school go about training all your teachers in technology? So I was, oh, looks like Dan actually closed the Hangout. But uh, we'll come back to him, we'll ask that question when he comes back in. Um, Heather, I'm going to pass it over to you. I know you're doing some cool stuff in 11th and 12th grade um, and using a whole bunch of Web 2.0 tools. So I'd love to hear what are your best practices. Hi. I feel um, that Anna and Dan talked a lot about things I wanted to talk about as well. Um, so I can start with some of the things that I've really found that kids are really engaging with the content in my class because of different web tools, particularly for I teach US history and psychology so Dan we might have to talk about what you did that was really awesome I'm like writing it down like call Dan find out what he was doing anyways um, so some of the things we have done and I can share my screen is that I've given students a lot more choices in what they do and it sounded like across the board that's what we're doing now that we have the Chromebooks is that here's what I want you to learn you demo you pick the tool to demonstrate your knowledge of that content so let me share my screen with you guys. You and go. okay, perfect. So I will share my screen. So some of the things that every day my students come in and they get a agenda and the agenda gives them the learning targets for the day as you can see and then their final project for psychology they're working on and Dan I will share this with you and it is um, they have choices in this this year. In the past, I gave them one tool to do. They had a video because I could master that. Well, with the Chromebooks in the classroom, they can pick the tool. And so they have different, they can make a children's book digital, a video, or do a podcast, podcast, or what we're doing, a Google Hangout if they wanted to just talk about disorders. I was okay with that. So that's what they get every day in my room. So, and they can use, a lot of them will use Wii Video or the YouTube um, creator to work on the videos on their Chromebooks. And then another thing with my choices is that I will show you the timeline. This is the website that Dan started to show you. And then I take those timelines that students create. And I we've only created two, one for Civil War and then Cold War. And then I put it on the blog and I have them do like the summaries of it and asking questions. And it's a way better way than them for them to get the information than taking notes the old-fashioned way. And they're much more engaged in the content. And I've noticed those units we have done that. The kids like rock on the end of the summative test for those units. I also did podcasts with my students for the 20s. And they use SoundCloud 
to record those. So this was, I used to do this in the past. I didn't really change the assignment, except this time now, instead of just giving us a radio broadcast in front of the class, they did it um, in the hallways, all, all little groups, and recorded it, and it was awesome. And I'd be happy to share those out, too, if kids want to hear it or any of these. Um, this is today's meet. If you've every social studies teacher and foreign language teacher, you know, you show videos in your class. There's so much good stuff out there. If you haven't used today's meet, basically you create your own classroom and or your own chat room, I should say, and I have my students go on there. And you can create, it can last a week, it can last a month, and students get in there by the link and then they can join. And then your message is 140 characters, so similar to what our students do know using Twitter Limited. And I'll show you some of the really neat stuff is that when the kids ask, they're talking, we watched a schizophrenic video last week for psychology, and they'll ask questions and other students will answer them for them instead of me being, I'm not the one who knows all the knowledge, they can go out and seek that themselves and then share it with each other. But it's just really neat, like you're hearing from kids that who are introverts who would never raise their hand in class. Um, I know somewhere in here they have links that they were sharing. But the kids who would never raise their hand in class are jumping on talking because this is what they can do. This is what they're used to. They like it. I have better relationships with kids because now I know their thoughts while I'm watching a video. It's not just the kid who, you know, the class clown or the loud mouth in class. It's everyone talking. It's really neat. Let's see. Um, those are some of the big ones that I use. Is the today's meet has really just completely changed. Stop my screen share right now. Has really completely changed my classroom. Just the kids come in and when it's a video, they're like engaged in it. They want to watch the video. They're telling me things that in the past I know every U.S. history teacher knows Peter Jennings, the Century videos. And in the past, like, oh, those are okay. Now they're like, I love this video. This is so great. And I didn't do anything different, but allowed them to have a conversation while watching it and to ask questions while going on. So it's completely changed that way of getting the information via video and talking about it instead of asking or writing on a worksheet. Um, going back to one thing Dan said about paper, when I hand out paper in my room, which is every once in a while, my kids will look at me like, oh, so 2011, why do we have paper in here? Like, so it's really cute. Um, but they just, it's engaging them. Kids who like will tell me I hated history, now they love it. And I'm not doing anything different. I mean, maybe I am. But the Chromebook is really engaging them in this content. It's awesome. I love it. That's cool. Now, are you noticing with today's meeting, I love that idea of crowdsourcing those questions, getting if they're using Twitter already, they understand the idea, and yeah. answering each other, becoming experts. Have, have you noticed that they'll use it at home as well? Can they get on Today Meet? It's, is it all browser-based? They can access it wherever they are? Yes, they can access today's meet wherever they are. I have had kids, which was really neat. I had one student out for a couple weeks in um, the semester, and I would send the as agendas, and if the video is available online, I post the links. And so a couple girls would sign in and join today's meet during our class period while they were at home. So they could do it wow. everywhere. Yeah. That's cool. And I think that's what you'll find, too, is it's so funny during these last Hangouts, it's not even so much about the Chromebooks, it's about using, that's just a way to get there, it's about all these cool web resources that you're st showing to these students that they can use, you know, they go home on their parents' computer and get on it, or they get on their smartphone, and I think that's what's so powerful about what all of you guys are doing, is it's so web-based, and access is so widespread, so that's great, and that's so cool to see how they're, uh, they're really using that to answer each other and help each other out, so. Yeah, it's been a really amazing experience. Great example. And Dan, I know you you accidentally jumped off for a minute. Um, I did want to ask, and this is a great question for both you and uh, Heather and Annalisa as well. Um, there was a question on the stream that says, with all your students using this technology, and you know, Heather, you're talking about them using Twitter outside, et cetera, um, how did your school go about training all your teachers? So how did you guys learn about how to do this? And Dan, maybe I'll start with you because I know you were on the tech integration team last year for your one-to-one. -one. Yeah, um, yeah, we had a team that our district, because we were deciding that we wanted to go one-to-one -one, but didn't know what to use. So uh, we got four teachers out of the classroom, and the four of us sat down, figured things out, and then we went around. We interviewed teachers, asked them um, just you know from the middle school through the high schools, and said, what do you know how to do? What do you want to be able to do? Uh, we tailored individualized plans for teachers and said, hey, if this is what the skill you want to do, and we went in and helped you know engage them as much as possible. We built an entire uh, PD site in our um, LMS so that now anytime 
teachers want to go in and get resources. There's a beginner, <clears throat> excuse me, intermediate and advanced levels for all the content areas. So yeah, we have a really uh, pretty strong PD for people that want to use it. Uh, for and I'm guessing for all the people that are in this hangout, you know, we're all early adopters probably. So uh, you know, I know for all, most of us probably we just figure out all of our tech skills on our own. We just went out and did PD, but. In order to training teachers and whatnot, it's a really effective model, and it's something you have to stick with. You can't let it fall by the wayside because people get overwhelmed pretty quickly. That's a good point. Annalisa, anything to add? Yeah, we had, at the end of last year, we spent some time doing professional development, which is always, I think, hard in May and June to really start thinking about next year. Um, but our, our administrators were careful to give us time to plan before the year ended, while our brains were kind of still thinking about school. And then um, just collaboration has been so huge because I think with, the, with moving to one-to-one, -one, we all move at our own paces. And so, um, you know, talking with my, the other eighth grade teachers and my team that I want to do this project, what are some options for the best tools that I can do with, you know, these are, this is what I'm trying to have the students learn. Um, what can I do? And just talking it out with the people who, who are also on board like we are is really, really helpful. That's good advice. Heather, anything to add to that? There's already some really um, good Yeah. Some things I know my school does, we have, um, we're still in the early adoption program. Uh, myself and one other teacher are piloting the Chromebooks in our classroom currently, so our students are not one-to-one. -one. But one thing we do is we do have, um, I think it's probably every other, probably once a month now, is that they have these Google Apps classes that our tech guys have been teaching. Another course that I've taught in the summer for teachers is web tools. Um, and in addition to that, I know for myself, you asked, like, how do we, because we are, I think, as Dan said, the early adopters of this in our school and those going out there. It's like, I know that I use Twitter for that. So if I have a question about what's, I so saw I found the timeline. What's a new way, like, one of the websites I did like wasn't working. So I went and tweeted it out and using those right hashtags to collaborate with other teachers and also keeping an open mind to collaborate with teachers in your building. Um, and our social science department here at Cary Grove, um, one Monday a month, we have a late start Monday, so we have um, professional learning time. And so one of those Mondays a month, I run a tech CLT. And almost all the time, it's something that I gathered from Twitter. Another thing we did, I went to and attended in February was a thing called Play Date. And it was this idea of, here's a room of teachers, and it was from all the Chicago area, and if you um, look at the hashtag on Twitter, Playdate13, um, I believe, it was just teachers playing on the tools, and that's a thing we don't get time to do. I think a lot of us, we're all capable and really, really smart people. We can definitely learn the tool. It's the give me time to actually play with it, and so that's what I think really needs to be emphasized in professional development, not just here's all this stuff, now figure it out, but here's a few things, play a little bit. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I will, speaking of Twitter, I found that so many teachers use it. I'm actually new to Twitter myself. So um, I, I know Heather, I think I'm following you and you're following me, and I was gonna tweet all of you at the end of this session. So I'll put my Twitter handle up there and then people if they wanna connect with all of you, if that sounds all right. So email me your Twitter handle so I can, I can tweet, and I'll tweet the recording of this video too. Uh, and then Dan, I also I put a link in. If anyone's watching this real time on the comment thread, I added a link to uh, Fond du Lac's professional development site, which is excellent. So feel free to check that out. Um, all right, now we're switching gears, moving east over to New Jersey. Jennifer and Anne, um, thanks for joining today. And uh, you guys might still be on mute. Um, so thank you for joining and teaching um, in the elementary level with um, the web and Chromebooks. And so really interesting to hear how is it working in fifth grade and doing this team approach. Um, what have you been doing with, with the web and, and Chromebooks? We are loving life. Um, our children are 10 and 11. We are. Um, we're only 55 students in a school of 1,100. And we're the only teachers doing this. And nobody has ever done it before in our district or anywhere close by. They're all coming to see us now. So. It has been fabulous, and we are trying to use all these tools that we can, but like someone else said, it does get overwhelming. There's so much out there, um, but our students have embraced this like no other. 
Um, one of the things, we were very jealous of um, Dan talking about all the professional development. <laughs> <laughs> we're, yeah, uh, we, um, we were given some tech time, um, you know, once a month, half a day together to, to collaborate with one of our trainers. But other than that, um, we, we made ourselves available over the summer to uh, do some technology training. But that was on our own time. It wasn't um, required. And then other than that, we had two days of training just on the device, the Chromebook itself. So, um, yeah, we really had a, a, an overwhelming year. Um, but we've, we've made the best of our time. And um, although we do use a lot of the uh, Google Suite as far as Google presentations, we had the kids research different explorers and in groups, collaborate on documents, and then create a Google presentation. Um, I know we also did Google drawings, like a slavery acrostic. And, uh, we're not as savvy with the screen share. Again, we're kind of on our own here, so <laughs> we don't have anything to screen share. So we apologize, but um, and, and it also seems like we are the you know we teach the youngest out of the crew. So I don't know how applicable it would be, but um, we did do a couple things. Like I said, Google presentations, Google drawings. Um, we use Edmodo. We love Edmodo to flip the classroom. Um, the students really respond to that because of the Facebook-like um, settings and, and features. And even being 10 and 11. Um, you know, they can't access Facebook or, or um, any of those things. So, like um, somebody mentioned Blogster, um, we, can't, we can't use that because of their age restrictions. Um, they do like educreations, um, you know, being able to, for them to show us what they've learned after we've, you know, talked about a topic. Um, although, once we did we video, um, they kind of became like tech snobs, and they we don't really want to use educations anymore. We'd like to we'd like to show what we've learned through ReVideo, and then we recently um, learned about MoveNote. So we haven't used it yet, but we're excited to try MoveNote in the classroom. It's just amazing because we didn't know what a ten-year-old could do. It's amazing. They created websites last week that were like professional websites. So we're just so excited, and we can't wait to see what what more we can do. And you know, you mentioned like. Um, you know, asking us about what we foresee for next year. We have so many ideas, and we will be, um, us and another fifth grade team will still be the only two teams in the school with the devices, um, although it is moving up to sixth grade with seven teachers. After that, the, the third phase of the, um, the pilot is for, you know, every kid in the district to have a device. So we're still in the infancy stage, um, but being paperless, has been, um, it's been amazing. You know, special education students, we did have um, an instance about a month ago where the special education teacher had copied something and made it available for the students to use a paper copy. And the paper got lost. And it was like the end of the world. Like, what do you do? We lost it. What do you mean we lost the paper? Because it was obviously available for them to use on the Chromebook. So, um, and just enriching the students has been so easily through the websites. Um, I don't know if you guys know about Hapara, but we use Hapara in our district. But, um, it's just the grading. Like I know that um, Dan talked about being able to grade, you know, right there, you know, not bringing home a pile of papers. That's the, the Hapara has enabled us to, to do that as well, and we we use that all the time. We were at a Google Summit uh, last month, and we were checking in with the kids, and we're able to uh, send them a message either individually or all at once through Hapara. And so, just to make sure that they, they were, didn't like yeah. it. <laughs> so we we were able to make sure that they were on track, and we just sent them a message, whether good or bad, and uh, they couldn't believe it. We got so many emails. That was so amazing that you could see what we're doing, even though you're not here. Yep, all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, if anyone uh, knows about Hapara, we've just uh, we've embraced it, and uh, we could never live without it. That's a great point. Hapara came up, I think, yesterday or the day before as well. And it's a tool. It's a third party. I think there's a fee, but it helps with classroom management. So you can view a thumbnail of all the Chromebook screens in your class, no matter where you are. And you can send private messages that pop up on their Chromebook. Um, and so that's pretty cool. And think about being able to you know, be 100 miles away and sending a message out. That's pretty cool. Yeah. We love it. <laughs> have you found you raise a really good point around classroom management? Have you found that with all this technology, our kids being able to are they focused? Are they you know are they are they kind of haywire all over the place? What are your best practices to keep them on task? Yeah, it's a little difficult because of their age group. Um, but actually, we haven't had problems this year. I wonder if it's only because it's it's the first year and they haven't been able to find the loopholes as easily as maybe a couple of years from now when they're a little more savvy even though we do find that they are quite savvy. Um, 
we haven't had that many problems yet. And and again, because it's in its infancy, we never really set forth any rules. We didn't know what rules to establish. But now that we've gone through it for a year, we're actually going to have these students establish rules for our next year class. And um, yeah, so they have some kind of ownership, and they realize that they're the pioneers of this. And, and that's a cool need. idea. Having them, yeah. yeah. If another kid's on a game, it's not, hey, Bob's on the game. Yeah, so they, they kind of watch on each other. So they stay on task in that respect. That's really interesting. It's kind of like peer policing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And well, what's really cool, too, is I think you've really, it sounds like what you've done is you've really allowed them to flourish. And that takes a lot of guts because you're moving from this, like, teacher-centered -centered technology where, like, you're at the overhead to them now having access to all these tools. Has that been... Has that been hard, or has that been pretty easy? I thought it would be harder than it was, because I'm a control freak. And uh, no, it's been great just to see them grow and help each other. And they're a family. It, it's just really neat. Even in the very, very beginning, when we did, you know, I think one of the first things we did out of the, out of the box was, you know, Google Drawing in the second week that we had them in September. And I, I was doing a lesson, and I'm like, I really don't know how much I need to teach them about you know, Google Drawing, I don't know much about it. I've only played with it. Played with it. Okay. So <laughs> we um they were teaching me. No, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Toller, you, you just go right up here and you click on that button. I'm like, oh whatever, just get to work. Show me what you know. Mm -hmm. it, it, they were able to do it. It was amazing. So in that respect, like I was saying, savvy before they know all that stuff. And so they haven't found try to go around and finding all the loopholes just yet. Maybe in a couple of years, but for now, I'm liking where we are. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And it's cool to see that there's learning going on all over. Students are learning, you're learning. That's that's pretty cool. So thank you so much for sharing all that. It's really helpful and exciting. And we're looking forward to hearing what happens next year. We'll have to all reconvene. <laughs> uh, thank you. So I should say, rather than passing, I should say bonjour, Patricia. Uh, Patricia, thank you for joining us from Canada, and I know you're using Chromebooks in foreign language, so really excited to hear your perspective on using the web, what web tools are out there, and how it's helping students. Hi, everyone. Well, I want to just kind of backtrack a second. I am using it for foreign languages because I'm a French immersion teacher, so all of our core subjects are taught in French, including our music, our art. Um, our phys ed specialist is not French, so their phys ed is in English, but beyond that, everything in our classroom is in French. So um, it's kind of cool being um, towards the end of this Hangout, because I've heard a lot of stuff, and um, it makes me kind of feel like I'm on the right track, right? And it makes me feel like um, we're starting great things, and there's other people there that are doing great things, and you just kind of feel supported. Um, I've been using using a lot of technology in class over the last couple of years um, just to make learning more fun, um, especially my social studies actually. That's um, who was the other social teacher? I'm kind of mixing up fate, right? So, but I'm, I'm grade four and five, right? So my kids are younger um, and I find it really, really difficult. Our curriculum in grade four and five focuses on our provincial history and the stories of the people as well as in grade five on the stories of the country. and as interesting as it is um, with my secondary background in history, um, it's not as necessarily that interesting for a four-year-old, or sorry, a grade four, who doesn't understand what, what it is and why it's important. So what I thought I'd do is I'll show you guys a couple things that I'm doing in class. Um, and with regards to the Chromebooks, um, we don't have Chromebooks in our classroom yet. Our district has a set of Chromebooks that we can um, loan out and borrow and sign up for. I had them in my classroom for a month and I feel like I've been robbed of my my I don't even know it's just awesome to have it at your fingertips right and my girls I'll show you why I'm saying my girls because I actually have an all-girl class I'll get to that in a sec because it kind of adds to the neat story about these Chromebooks but my girls um, noticed it themselves like the day after the Chromebooks went back to our district office I found them you know, just going to find a solution themselves, do analytical research on their own and saying, oh, but they're not on the card anymore. And so, like, I mean, we still have access. Our school, I'm, I'm, I work in a great school. I work for a great district. We are fortunate to have, you know, two computer labs, iPads, a bunch of technology at our fingertips. But having those Chromebooks in my class 
was just amazing. And so I can really relate to the other two teachers from elementary who are just kind of starting this. Um, same with us, right? Like just having that consistent access and people who are afraid of one-to-one -one computing often fear that, um, you know, the direction of technology taking over our jobs as educators, but it's absolutely not about that. It's about the fact that it is there as the tool when you need it, when you want to use it, right? Not waiting to sign up for lab time or making sure other teachers don't need to use the lab. It's there, you can get your job done, and then just go for it. And so that's why I'm so excited about these Chromebooks and so going to find a way to get some Chromebooks in my classroom next year because it was just an amazing experience. Um, so I'm going to screen share so we can just get to, I'm going to just show you what I mean by um, my girls to begin with. Can you see my girls right now? Yep, they look great. All right, so this is my all-girl classroom um, in grade four French immersion. I have 23 girls, not a single male in my class. Um, it's not, our program isn't set up to be an all-girl classroom. It's just the way my... Oh no, we might have lost her for a minute. She should hopefully rejoin. She might have frozen up. So Patricia will be right back, <laughs> hopefully. While we wait for her to come back though, I'm going to pass it over. Um, Sarah, we're coming back down from Canada. Back into <laughs> Illinois, Sarah's from Rochester, um, teaching in 11th grade social studies and doing a lot of flipping. So I'm really interested. People are talking a lot about flipped classrooms and really interested in hearing your perspective. Um, and Patricia, will come right back to you. But we're going to pass it to uh, Sarah for a minute to talk about flipping and, and uh, what she's doing. Then we'll be right back to you, OK? Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, I voluntarily flipped my classroom two years ago and so when we got the Chromebooks in the classroom this year I was very excited. Um, I saw the transformation in my students almost immediately. I've been teaching for 13 years so I'm used to the old school method and so when we've got you know when we have this new method the transformation is miraculous almost. My students have, are collaborating in ways which I've never seen before. They're learning from each other's successes and each other's setbacks and the Chromebooks allow me to diversify my curriculum and allow me to successfully flip the classroom, which further engages the students. Um, in the, my flipped classroom, my philosophy is that there's not, there's no failures. There's just opportunity, opportunities to learn and grow and revisit and revise ideas. And the Chromebooks have increased the ease with which I'm able to, to do that, which is amazing. Students can pace their own lessons as they need to, and technology provides the tools for you know those students who are shy or maybe not comfortable speaking in front of others. You know that confidence to be heard, and it also encourages those more vocal students to to listen a little bit better. Um, I'm going to go ahead and screen share. Um, the first thing I want to show you is as soon as I click the screen share button. I'll let you know when it's good. Okay. So I created just a Google just document kidding. that you can click on this bit.ly link that you can see um, you everything that I'm going to talk about today. Not there yet? Not there just yet. Um, make sure you confirm the, sh the screen share once you click on it. Okay. Perfect. Now you're good. All right. Great. So I created a Google Doc, and then you can see it through this bit.ly link, everything that I'm going to talk about today, including the links to my website and everything else. This is the website I have created for my dual credit American studies class. And um, what you see on the, the front screen are all the links to um, YouTube, my Twitter, student blogs, Pinterest, and then other professional websites that I use in class um, every week, actually. On the left hand side you'll see everything that a student needs in my class for the whole year including you know their blog prompts and their, they blog each week and respond to each other's blogs and so feel free to go ahead and click on that link. Um, I create a learning module for each chapter that we are doing so I'll show you a few of those learning modules here in a second and then obviously Common Core and technology standards that students need to visit 
This lesson plan link are the daily lesson plans that help parents especially so they know what their student is responsible for each day. And then also um, feel free to check out all the student projects and presentations. I have posted their work on all of these lessons here for you. So the next thing I would like to show you is um, just a learning module. I kind of go through, um, I use Google for everything in my classroom. We are definitely all things Google. Um, Google Sites has definitely made it easy to run my classroom along with using Google Forms to gather student work. I don't think I showed you the forms link, but you can click on that forms link and this is where students turn in everything. They also um, peer assess each other. They turn in their evaluations of me. They have an exit form that they complete each day um, after a lesson and so then they tell me what I did well, tell me what I need to improve on, the things that they learned, etc. And so this project based lesson I used um, with Ed Canvas and so it's easy to use the iframe and put that into my Google site and then students were responsible for creating their own Ed Canvas um, projects after that. The next thing I'll show you a sample learning module and this learning module we did at the beginning of the year and you can see that we use poll everywhere to get people talking a pre-quiz that's a part of the lesson. Each learning module like I said is problem based or project based and it starts with essential questions and skills that students are responsible for learning. Then we kind of integrate some videos to get their attention. But for the most part, this was the first time that we used Twitter in the classroom. And we started early on in the year and in the very beginning, it just like with anything else, it took time, but it has gained momentum and we use it so often and so frequently today that the students are really more engaged and interactive not only with my lessons but with each other which is very important. Um, if we get back to this learning module you can kind of see how since this was at the beginning of the year we're starting out with sharing documents and sharing presentations. Students had to contribute to one presentation and then they're responsible for commenting on each other's slides after they've created that lesson. Uh, everything is research based in my class so students are devising their thesis statements researching that and then producing something and a part of this lesson was to uh, analyze primary sources and so as they're analyzing this together in class once they get outside of class if they have any sort of responses or um, questions that they need to contribute we started on Twitter and I'll refer to my Twitter homepage. This is my Twitter homepage and then once we talk about class, this is how we do it. So everybody in the class will go to a hashtag and so then you'll see a hashtag A3 and then everybody kind of contributes to that hashtag and we can see each other's responses there. But this first Twitter assignment that we did was very basic where they're tweeting questions to me at Mrs. Luttrell1 and like someone else had mentioned students are collaborating and responding to each other's questions more so than more so than I need to which was which was very refreshing to me as an educator. And then this lesson we're also talking about immigration and comparing immigration then and immigration today and so we're using another hashtag for students to post their thesis statements. Then the next day when we rejoin, we review those thesis statements, but then we kind of move along throughout our lesson. And so they're creating, you know, um, taking a, excuse me, they're taking a political cartoon and they're making it more modern that kind of discusses their uh, perspective on immigration. And you, so you can see here by using Google Draw, they're replacing a an original political cartoon with a current events theories or laws, ideas that they have about immigration today. So uh, everything that you see kind of in turquoise is a little Twitter activity. 
the culminating activity for this lesson was a Twitter war. And the Twitter war was kind of devised by myself and a student. We worked on it together. I asked how can I use Twitter to be more engaging and they gave me this idea and so then I ran with that. And so basically what a Twitter war is, um, I create brackets and the students create people from a specific chapter. It doesn't necessarily have to be individual based but it can also be theories that they're challenging. So let's say for example this person researched Charles Darwin and then they, this document that was shared with everybody in the class, they researched five facts about the person and then what happens is I would for example pair up Charles Darwin and Elizabeth Cady Stanton in the first round and then on Twitter they would challenge each other ideas. Each round would probably go about 10 minutes and everybody's tweeting at the same time to a specific hashtag. After that 10 minutes, then we would, um, students would read everybody else's responses, reply to them, and then we would grade each other's and judge who won that specific round. You can kind of see how um, we've also used Twitter in that same Twitter war. They had to come up with who am I quotes, and they would tweet that quote along with a specific hashtag, and the hashtags allow them to be a little bit more creative, but yet still cogent in their responses and you know they're still summarizing and, and making a cogent statement but they are the hashtags allow them to be a little bit more uh, funny you know creative creative in those responses but for the most part um, we do use Twitter you can kind of see some screenshots that we took of the Twitter war and the kids definitely responded to this and they continue to ask how we, you know, if we can still do this, and we've done this a few times and fine-tune the process. Um, the next part I wanted to show you was just how one of my students was very creative. He put this link in an iframe in one of his World War I projects. He created a Google site for World War I, and this was one of the most fascinating things I had seen, where he assumed the role as Gavrilo Princip, obviously the assassin of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, which subsequently started World War I. And he tweeted that, and it was very con context-specific and content-specific. And what students were allowed to do was then go into this web page and reply to these different links. And the student then replied to his peers as Gavrilo Princip, which was very exciting. So those are just a few ways that we use Google. And um, we love Google. Every, everything that we do from sharing a Google Doc to creating their own websites and their own problem-based units today, we all do, we do it through Google. And so it's, it's a truly amazing process for us. Those are great examples. I love the idea of the tweet war. That's so cool. Will you um, tell us again the bit.ly link that you create? Because those are excellent. Sure, I'll go ahead and screen share it again and then go to that link. And I know it's bit.ly slash all things Google. Okay, all things Google. see it now. Yep. Okay. Bit.ly slash all things Google. That is great. Thank you so much for sharing. Sure. I love also when you started, you said the idea of no failures. You're learning from everything that you're doing, and that's, I think, a great way uh, of approaching it. Thank so you. cool. Um, I did want to ask you, on the Twitter war, did you see that um, students, were, were they just super engaged through it, or how did that change the, the environment in the classroom? It, they were super engaged, and it was, it was, it was exciting because I was actually had an evaluation that day, so there was an administrator in the room too. And so the administrator got to see how it not only just engaged the students were with the content, and but also with each other and replying and responding to each other and, and challenging each other's comments and challenging each other's ideas, which was completely refreshing. So. That's so cool. I love it. Thank you again for sharing. That was Thank great. You. And appreciate you sharing out those resources. Those are excellent. Absolutely. Um, all right, Patricia, we'll pass it back to you to round us out if that sounds good. It looks like you're able to get all back right. in. I'm here. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Okay, great. I don't know where I disappeared. Um, so. I'm back to my all-girl class and we use technology and um, I think it's especially 
important when you teach second languages, regardless of what the second language is. Mine happens to be French. It could be anything. Making learning more fun, right? Bottom line, being creative and teaching children that um, learning is taking risks. And part of that taking risks, I really like what uh, Sarah just said too, is um, how we always find solutions. We're able to find solutions as a class. So this whole Chromebook um, adventure for me and my girls um, has just been amazing. I'm going to show you. So a lot of things we've already touched on. I think people that use technology in education kind of tend to, you know, tap into the same sorts of things. Um, one thing that I really loved. So let's remember that my kids like a lot of you are senior high and junior high teachers so you're doing amazing amazing things my kids um, you know started off by learning how to log into their email accounts how to access gmail and um, the thing I love about Google Docs is that um, when my kids share their work with me it makes them entirely accountable for their work right so they can't say oh well I gave it to you and you lost it for example um, it makes them aware of deadlines. So for example, I'll screen share and I'll try not to lose you guys this time. Um, I need to go to I believe this and I hope I'm doing this right. I can see, I can see myself. So you All right, to... <laughs> great. So here's my calendar, right? A lot of us have talked about having calendars in Google Docs. Um, I'm going to skip quickly to my classroom website so that you guys can see what I mean. On my website, and I will talk to you guys all a little bit about my special history project because it's one of my favorite things ever. Um, but on that, I have a special calendar for what is expected of my social studies classes. So when we begin, when we begin, um, it tells the parents and the students what it is that we started doing, when it's due where they have to hand it in, how they have to hand it in. Um, it makes them more accountable for this is my work and this is what I need to do. Um, I created, so just to give you an idea of what eight-year-olds are learning to do with Google Docs, right? Because again, much younger, but they have a deadline when they have to hand in their work. Um, these checklists are usually um, in English so that parents can understand what they need to do, but they had to learn how to upload documents, how to convert them into the drive format, how to link websites when they're citing things, and so they pretty much had to hand this checklist in to me to show to me that they were prepared for their project. Now, my night at the museum project, this is the, the cool one. Um, I cannot take credit for the initial idea. I, I logged into doing this with another teacher from another school. She's been doing this history fair for many, many years. Um, I started doing it four years ago, and I'm not going to um, bore you with like the actual video of it because it would take forever to watch it. Um, but if you did come to my website, essentially what happens is these kids become statues. Um, I'll just let it play for two seconds if it'll decide to go. Um, they become statues and with a push of a button it's not going to work and it's fine. It's just taking a while to load and I don't want to waste precious time with this. But what happens is the kids become um, statues like in the in in the movie and they have a button on their hand and when you push the button they come to life and they say you know for example if they were uh, a voyager and they were working hard on transporting goods for the fur trade they would say like one of my kids this year is starting off by like rowing and singing a song and she stops and she wipes her forehead and she's like I'm exhausted do you know how hard my life is as a voyager now where technology comes into this right because this is still just hands-on learning, but where technology comes into all of this is that my kids um, use all kinds of web tools to get the base knowledge to become and to prepare for this project. Um, I use a comic program called Comic Life. This is just like a, a basic um, a basic comic program and I actually had these kids do their own illustrations for it because um, I have limited lab time with this class. This was before the Chromebook um, phase but I also have kids using Glockster. I know one of the one of the groups prior to me, I think it was the the two who, te who team teach, you had mentioned how you couldn't use Glockster because of age restrictions. 
Um, if you set up a teacher account, actually, I could be wrong, but I usually double check with this. If you set up a teacher account, as long as the students are monitored and under teacher supervision, you can set up like um, it's kind of like a dashboard. It's called a dashboard, and you log in all of your students and you monitor their accounts, and then you can get through it that way. And the cool thing about Glockster is, for those of you who don't know it, is you can add video directly into it. You can add um, you can add sound into it. That particular sample was the appreciation of Canadian national parks. Um, it's a very dry subject, but we need to teach it. And so using Glockster is an awesome way for it. Another one of my favorite is Bitstrips. Um, if you guys are familiar with this one, these are all of the avatars of my class. Um, some of the girls weren't there the day when we created the avatars. And within Bitstrips, you can, so um, after our night of the museum project is finished, and all of this is in French. Um, my girls are going to create a comic strip with their own avatar in which they're going to meet their historical figures and they're going to have to explain the historical context of the time. So for example, if one of my little girls is researching Victoria Callahu, who was a Métis woman in Alberta, um, she's going to wake up one morning and discover that she is in the life of Victoria Callahu and be completely confused by this world. And within bit strips, she's going to create a comic in which the two characters come together. Um, another one that I love is Animoto. Um, that one was already mentioned, but what we did with Animoto, um, another part that's a little bit difficult to make young children, and I'm pretty sure older children too, be excited about is geography and natural resources. So my girls um, made short 30 minute commercials using Animoto in which, um, they had to promote their outcome was representing two major um, natural resources from the particular um, part of the province that they were from. And again, I don't know if it's going to load. I have a lot of tabs open, but it's really cool. Making commercials with Adamoto was the best thing I've ever done. These girls like walk around stating facts about oil and natural gas beyond anything that I'd ever expect them to, right? So Animoto is definitely one of my favorite programs to use. And um, the Chromebook thing, just going back to that, um, I would really. I was at a conference a while ago, um, actually our teachers convention, and there is a Google Apps educator there who did a lecture on 20% classroom. And, and um, if I could just get my hands on, um, if I could just get my hands onto some Chromebooks in my classroom, I w oh man, I'm gonna try to pilot that next year. I don't know what that looks like yet, and um, my administration doesn't really know that I'm into this idea yet because I don't I don't know how to create it yet. But if you I just could just get a few hundred people, so I hope they don't mind. <laughs> no. No, absolutely. I, um, I, uh, I'm really excited about the trying to bring that together. Flip classroom is a little bit difficult in elementary. Yeah. Um, I love the idea. I'm not saying it's not doable, but I could kind of try to do that with this 20% idea. Yeah, I just, yeah. I love it. So it is, I hope that's kind really of my cool thing. It's to see how you're using all these web resources too. If you have a Chromebook, it's a great way to access it, but there, are, you know, it's you can get them on any devices, which is pretty cool. So thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate that. It was really cool to see those examples. Sarah, I had one last question for you, and I know we're over time, but what uh, question, what Hello? did you create your videos for Flip Classroom? Hello, I'm sorry. Uh, what, what did you use to create the videos for Flipped Classrooms? What the Flipped Classroom, I, we use several different types of video creator. Um, we did did use a few things with the iPad, like Edge Creations, but we've also used Pixorial and We Video. We found a lot of success with with those video formats, and the students catch you know the students work with those very well too. So that's Pixorial great. And we Video. That's great. Perfect. Um, and then also, you can actually, if you want to, you can use Google Hangouts and record them like we're doing yeah. now. Everyone can do that. So. Um, I know we're, I've kept you for four minutes over, and you guys probably have classes to teach, um, but I wanted to thank you all so much. Um, Jennifer, Ann, did you have something to say? No, we are on our way to Skype with a dairy farmer, so oh, we so have to <laughs>
<laughs> you have to go. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you all so much. We really appreciate it. Um, tomorrow we'll be working with, uh, there'll be a panel of special education teachers, same time, 1 p.m. Eastern. We're also going to make a recording of this video available, so uh, it'll be in about 30 minutes. Really appreciate all of you teachers. I've learned so much today, and you guys are doing fabulous things, so keep on with that great path, and we'll have to check in with you next year. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye.